Hey there. Welcome to episode 110 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is some of my Transformers. So why am I talking about Transformers? Well, the problem is my Transformers collection has been growing pretty steadily. I've got two bookshelves, about six feet tall or so, so two of the bigger bookshelves in here, that are full of Transformers. And it is my entire Transformers collection. So dating back to the vintage Transformers right up to what I'm buying today. And it's just gotten too full. So uh, I think I'm going to have to finally box up some of my Transformers. And it pains me to do that because, you know, as a collector, the whole point of collecting, for me at least, is to display it so I can enjoy it. Once it goes in a box, you know, I don't really see it unless I specifically dig it out for some reason. And there's often not a reason for me to dig anything out. So me and my older brother, Doug, we collected Transformers together when we were kids. So we had quite a few of the vintage figures, but the collection was split down the middle. So Doug had some, and I had some. Um, and I always had more of an attachment to characters that I owned as a kid. The toys never really lived up to my expectations. They were often big, chunky. Uh, they didn't move. They weren't articulated. They didn't look like the characters looked on the cartoons or in the comic books. So it wasn't that hard for me at like 13 years old to say, yeah, you know what, this brick of a toy is, I'm getting rid of it. But some of them I reacquired over time. Uh, and then after that, it mostly starts when Transformers kind of got its second wind around the mid-2000s. Uh, Hasbro launched what was initially called, I think, the Transformers Classics. And it went through a bunch of name changes. It was called Generations, Reveal the Shield, and that eventually carried into... Titans Return, Combiner Wars, and that leads us right up into present day. So basically from 2006 to now in 2021, the line has basically just kind of plotted along. My collection basically is I just kind of want one definitive version of each character. That's all I really cared about. So what I'm going to do is go through my Transformers collection, and it's very unlikely that I will take a character, even if it's a pretty sucky figure, if it's the only version of that character I have, I don't imagine I will put him in storage because I like to have representation of as many different characters over there as I can. But if I have, you know, three or four versions of one character, maybe it's time to let some of those lesser versions go. What I'm going to do in this video is just look at the 1984 Autobots. Look at If I have the original version, we'll take a look at it, and then we'll take a look at all the subsequent versions that I have, and then I'll decide if some of them are going into storage or not. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at my Transformers. Now, if you take a look at the original Braun from 84, you can see how he kind of sucks. Like, he was very stiff. His legs were kind of, like, long and weird looking. Um, like, you know, he, he's kind of neat. But especially when you look at what Braun appeared like in the cartoon, Braun, for one, had a totally different face in that he had a face. You know, the toy just had one of these weird, like, little black visor, but no other facial features. Like, other than that original 1984 release, to this day, there's really only been two other, uh, what I would say, mainstream versions of Brawn. So, what you're looking at here is the only Brawn figure I have ever owned, and it is not an official Transformer. This is not from Hasbro. This was made by a company called iGear. You know, I couldn't believe they could get away with it legally because this is clearly Braun, but he doesn't have an Autobot symbol on him. The toy wasn't called Braun. It was actually called uh, Hench. So, uh, yeah, the companies would find these names that were kind of similar. Um, so, yeah, this was made by iGear. I believe it was around 2013 when they put this out. And he's probably about five inches tall, which is quite a bit bigger than the original uh, Braun would have been. Braun was probably... Uh, three inches tall or so in the vintage line. So that's one of, right off the bat, that's one of the things I really liked about this figure is that he was, he felt big and bulky. Yeah, so I love this Braun figure. I'll just be honest. And one of the coolest things about this figure from iGear, so you see he's got the face which matches up with the little visor face that the original Braun toy had. But if you spin his head around, you've got a face that looks like his face from the cartoon. So just, Depending on how you want to display him, if you prefer the vintage toy look or the cartoon look, um, yeah, you can go either way. 
Um, I can't imagine Hasbro really making a better brawn than this. Probably the best official brawn came in 2017. Hasbro made uh, brawn from their Titans Return line. And yeah, he's not bad. If I didn't already have this figure, I probably would have bought that brawn. But like I said, I just want to have the best version of this character that I can in my collection. So, you know, until Hasbro tops this, this will probably be the only uh, brawn that I have. So now let's take a look at Bumblebee. So I don't have the vintage Bumblebee. And it, it wasn't a bad figure. It was cute. It worked. He is a very simple transformation. Um, but one thing that was always kind of weird was his face didn't match the... Uh, the kind of childlike face from the cartoon and from the comic books that we were used to. He had, again, kind of like with Braun, a very uh, kind of colder, visored face. He just didn't look as friendly. Now, this figure that I'm showing you right now, this is actually just from a couple years ago. I want to say 2019. And this is a recreation uh, of the original Bumblebee figure. So this card art looks exactly like how the vintage Bumblebee uh, would have been purchased back in the day. And you see that head. The packaging shows what the vintage Bumblebee head looked like. That kind of much more alien head. Now what's interesting about this re-release figure is they actually gave him a head more like the cartoons. So it doesn't match the packaging. So the Bumblebee that I keep in my collection is kind of what I would say is my default Bumblebee. Is this one here. So this is the one that kind of started it all for me as far as collecting Transformers as an adult. So this guy, again, you can see size-wise compared to the vintage figure, it's quite a bit bigger. He sizes up pretty accurately with that brawn figure. So they're right in scale, which is nice. Um, as far as articulation goes, like the vintage one didn't have elbows or knees or anything, but this guy does. So he moves nice, bends at the knee, you can get like some running positions out of him, his head turns again nothing that the vintage toy couldn't do he's got a lot more personality in his face he's got that nice little smile there so yeah if there's one knock against this figure it would be that he doesn't transform into a volkswagen beetle which i always kind of felt was necessary for bumblebee it's kind of his iconic you know vehicle mode but that's not a huge knock against him for me because i never transform my transformers He's still got the same basic shape. He's very round looking. So I can imagine that he transforms into a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, I was fine with this being my go-to Bumblebee, which is why I have not replaced him to this day. I will probably get the, um, the Earthrise version that is due out, or I guess the Kingdom version. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere in stores. It just recently came out. I will probably buy that. But I don't even know if I like it better than this one from the images I've seen. So yeah, I still think this is a great Bumblebee that holds up great to this day. The only other Bumblebee I have in my collection, which is by no means a replacement, is this here. This is the reaction figure from Super 7. So this is their line of kind of like five points of articulation, very simple little figures. So their arms, their legs, their heads move, and that's it. So next up, let's talk about Cliff Jumper. Pretty much every version of Bumblebee that has come out since, or I should say every version of Cliff Jumper, is usually just a repaint of Bumblebee. So this here is a 2006 Classics version of Cliff Jumper, and he's an exact repaint of that Bumblebee I just showed you. So I'm kind of fine with that because, as I mentioned, I really like that Bumblebee figure, and I think it translates into a really nice Cliff Jumper as well. You know, so he's red. He's got some of this gray deco added to him, which the original figure did not have. And the head design is a little bit different. But uh, yeah, I like this figure quite a bit. And I was uh, I was fine with this being the go-to cliff jumper in my collection. I don't see myself boxing this guy up anytime soon. However, uh, even though I pretty much stick just to Generation 1 figures, I did buy a different version of cliff jumper in 2011. I bought this version here, which is based on the Prime cartoon, which was a different continuity. And you can see Cliff Jumper here is quite a bit different. So he's got these kind of like bull horns on his head, which when he transformed into car mode, he had the bull horns on the, the hood of the car. And uh, yeah, so you see there, the hood of the car. So those were supposed to, I guess, be those horns, I think. 
But, uh, yeah, I didn't have much attachment to this Prime line. I don't think I've ever actually watched the cartoon it was based on or anything. But because Cliff Jumper is a favorite of mine, I liked the fact that they really gave him his own unique look in this show. And for the first time in his life, he wasn't just kind of a, uh, a lesser version of Bumblebee. Because Bumblebee in this show was still a little small yellow car, whereas Cliff Jumper was now a, a larger vehicle with a totally different design in both robot and car. So yeah, I like this figure quite a bit too. But this is very likely one of the figures that could end up in a box because I have better versions of Cliff Jumper, and this one just doesn't really fit in with my collection all that well, even though it's still a pretty cool toy. Now, uh, I do have one other Cliff Jumper to show you. So, this is the 2020 Earthrise Cliff Jumper. So, this is the same one that uh, Bumblebee is basically going to look very similar to this if I do eventually find him. So, this one here. I like this cliff jumper, um, and from what I understand, he will have a different head from the bumblebee, so that's nice. Um, but what's kind of a bummer is that he's so small. I like how they bulked him up for this size. This is kind of the perfect scale, I think, for those mini bots in like a modern Transformers line. I like them around this size at about five inches, whereas this guy here is probably about three inches. And it's just, a, it's a little too small for my liking, but it's a nice figure anyway. And, you know, he's a recent purchase just last year, so he's definitely not getting boxed up anytime soon. I think I probably have room in my collection to definitely keep these two versions on hand. But yeah, this guy here might be uh, fit for the bin. So next up, we've got Gears. So this is the vintage gear toy from 1984. And this is my childhood version of him. This is the one that I used to take outside and play with and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned in the intro, he's one of my favorite all-time Transformers. He's uh, he's very simple. He's, uh, he's seen better days. He's missing the grill off the front of the truck. But you see the Transformer, you basically just tuck his arms in like that and flip his legs around. And there you go. He's a truck. Um, I, uh, I don't ever transform my Transformers, but when I do, need, if I'm going to, I like them to be simple. I don't really want to have to dig out the instructions and spend 20 minutes trying to transform the things. So I like that this one, he, he like, he's a really good looking robot. Like, mind you, he could probably have better hands. There's not much in the way of hands. But, like, uh, a lot of Transformers, like, in later years, their legs were just a big chunk stuck together, or their arms were just little nubs that came out. Um... I think for this guy being such a simple transformation, he actually looks like a pretty cool truck and a pretty cool robot. So I think that's partly why he was my favorite. I really like this face. Now what's interesting about Gears is just like with Brawn and with Bumblebee, the toy had this little kind of nondescript face with the visor, but in the cartoon he did have a full face with a nose and a mouth, and he had a little more uh, personality he was able to emote. But this is one of the situations where I actually prefer this look. I kind of, I really just dig the way he looks in this mode here. So that's a great toy. I still, you know, I'm going to keep this guy in my collection. Um, now, who knows? This actually could get boxed up. If anything, probably because he's just so small. And like I said, I like to keep figures that were this small, like the two inch scale when they were first came out. I prefer to have larger versions of them. Now, I'd like to think these guys have grown in size over the years. So, even though I still love this figure, it might get boxed up. There haven't been a ton of official gear releases uh, over the years. Like Braun, there's only been a handful. So, I have this version here from 2014. This is from the Generations line of Transformers. So, you can see they've, uh, they've made them a little bit larger. So, you know, that's good. But... I don't like this figure. I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. So his head here, they've, they've given him the face, um, which is closer to the cartoon. But other than that, it doesn't look like gears from the cartoon. Like, the shape is just weird. Um, the head seems too small. I just, yeah, this figure does not sit well with me. For this being one of my favorite characters, if this is all I had, because uh, they still haven't made a better version of him, they haven't put him in any of their more recent lines like he wasn't in siege he wasn't in titan's return he wasn't in Earthrise. so this is the best it would get and that would be very disappointing 
if not for those third party companies that have really come through for me. So I've got two different third party versions of gears. So I have this 2014 version. Now this was made by a company called Make Toys and the toy was marketed with the name Cogwheel. And uh, you see here size wise, he's about the same as the Hasbro version. And he probably cost, where this guy was probably about 12 bucks. This guy was probably about 50 bucks. So that's kind of hard to swallow. But it is a far superior figure. Like just the, the head, the face design on this guy, he looks so much better. I love the big bulky double wheels on his shoulder there. The movement. The colors are just a lot crisper. Uh, like this is a really solid figure. I'd be pretty happy with this guy. And I am pretty happy with him. The only thing that is kind of a bummer is that he's still so small. Like, compared to that uh, Bumblebee and Brawn figure that I showed you, I would prefer a Gears at that scale. So, fortunately, the third-party company uh, iGear, the same one that made the, uh, the hench version of Brawn, it also made a Gears. They call this figure Cogs. But I love this figure. So this one, this one came out uh, 2013, I believe it was. And so you can see size-wise, he is about the five inch scale. So he matches up perfectly with the Bumblebee and the Brawn, just like I would want him to. And uh, yeah, he's just a big bulky toy. And I always felt that Gears was like a bulky, tough character. So I really love the kind of the girth of this guy. Look at the big those legs are like I like my Autobots I like all my toys actually they have a good solid base to stand on and that's one of my gripes with this guy here is that he's got these dainty little feet like you see his rocker joints it allows for some articulation but it makes him look like he's got these you know weak little ankles and all that sort of stuff whereas you know the original toy he had these big solid legs and uh, that's what I really like it has been recreated here so he's got a pretty cool gun with him. And like Brawn, so he's got this face here, which I think looks fantastic. You know, it's a recreation of that figure there. You can see how close these guys look. It's really, really spot on. Um, this might be a little difficult for me to do because I don't have much of a nail here, but if I can spin his head around, oh, he does the same thing that Hench does. I might have to cut away for a second. Bear with me. And there we go. So that's him with his face all spun around. And now he's got a face with the nose and the mouth and the eyes so he can emote. So that's closer to how he looked in the vintage cartoon. And I think this pulls it off way better than this. I just, yeah, I love this figure. Anyway, so when it comes to boxing up versions of Gears, um, I, th I could almost get rid of all three of these guys and just keep this one. Because not only do I think it looks the best, but it's also the scale that I prefer for these characters. So, this guy is absolutely on the chalking block. I never liked this figure in the first place. The only reason I bought it, and I bought it after I had those two, so it was really kind of redundant. But it was just that it was the first official release from Hasbro of one of my favorite characters in a long time. And he wasn't very expensive, so I thought, what the hell. Uh, and if I had room to display all these guys, you know, then sure. But like I said, I've run out of room. And uh, yeah, don't care for this figure, so this is an easy one to get rid of. Um, the vintage one, possibly, just because he's kind of small. and doesn't really match in with uh, my modern figures, like where this guy's kind of all rusted out and he's a little dirty and all that stuff. So he might, he might go. But yeah, these two guys here will probably remain in the collection. So let's take a look at Huffer. Now, I had the original Huffer when I was a kid. I was a big fan of that original toy. He's kind of weird. Um, the way his arms kind of folded downwards, it was a very awkward kind of stance. But I loved the way his like head was kind of tucked under that hood. And yeah, it was a really cool toy. Um, I liked that he had the kind of reflective chrome on his arms. And again, he was very simple transformation. All those mini bots were simple transformations. Now Huffer is again, surprise, surprise, he's another one of these characters who had a face in the cartoon. But the toy, he had this weird kind of little visor face. So they didn't quite match up. Um, I kind of liked the visor face on Huffer as well. But uh, yeah, having a more cartoon accurate version would have would have been appreciated as well. And that's what I've got here. 
This is a 2015 version of Hover. This is from the Combiner Wars uh, toy line. It's a cool transformer, but it doesn't look like Huffer to me. He's missing some key elements, most notably that hood that goes over his head. So I bought this guy because I needed it, a modern Huffer in my collection because I don't even have the vintage one any longer. But yeah, it never really sat right with me. I would like a new and improved Huffer. And thankfully, I'm going to get one in 2021. There's a new one included in the Kingdom line. So I will definitely be getting that one. Um, but I did also buy a third-party version of Huffer. So this guy is much closer. He's got that, the truck cab comes over top of his head, which I really like. I feel you need that with Huffer. Um, he does have the, uh, the face rather than the visor. But yeah, this one is from iGear in 2013. So if, if memory serves, uh, I bought this guy first. So their 2013 release, and I quite liked him. But he was still kind of small. Like he's closer to the size of the original toy, which in order to match my 2006 Bumblebee and stuff, I would have liked him to be a little, you know, scaled upwards a little bit. So that's why I was very pleased when the following year or two, Igear's figures were improved and they were upsized when they did their versions of Brawn and Gears. So yeah, not a bad figure. A lot closer to how I think Hover should look. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting that uh, 2021 Kingdom version, as I'm sure that will become my default Huffer in the future. And even though I like both of these figures, they could both potentially be booted into the bin once I get that new version. Now here is the last of the 1984 Minibots. This is Wind Charger. And this is, again, my vintage figure that I had as a kid. He's one of the few toys I kept. Partly because, again, he's simple. I like the transformation. Um, you know, he's a he works as a robot as well as a car. I like to transform into a sports car. You just tuck his arms in like that, flip these around, just like how gears worked. And then you've got this nice little sports car. So yeah, I always really liked Wind Charger. And just like all these little guys, you notice his face. He's got this kind of nondescript visor face. In the cartoon, Wind Charger had a face. So this is a character that I would definitely would have probably bought a third party version of, um, but he wasn't a, he wasn't a character that the third party ones seemed to be focusing on for some reason. And I did eventually get a version that I thought was decent. This is from 2010. So I got this kind of before the third party ones were becoming hugely popular for me as well. That was kind of a couple years later. So this guy was from 2010. He's from the classics line, but it was actually called Reveal the Shield at that point. They'd changed the name a few times. And this one is, you know, a bit bigger, but he's still too small. He doesn't scale up with the uh, the Bumblebee. Um, so that was a little odd because I think all these mini guys should be the same size. So, you know, this guy just didn't really fit in. And so it's a nice figure. Like, I like the head sculpt. He looks closer to what he looked like in the cartoon. Um, you know, he's not too gangly or anything. So, yeah, it's not a bad wind charger by any means. But he's definitely due for an update, I would say. They have put out a couple other versions of him. Um, probably the best one they released is in 2017. They put out a Power of the Primes version of Wind Charger. I probably should have got that one. But uh, you know what? I still think this one holds up pretty good. I think I was thinking that it wasn't as big enough of an improvement over this figure for me to justify seeking him out. Um, but hopefully we get a version of him in the modern like Kingdom line. And maybe they make him a little bit bigger. And I would probably upgrade my wind charger. If I was to get an upgrade, um, both of these guys could potentially be put away in the box. So now we're into the larger vehicles. So in 1984, the Autobot line was pretty much made up of these two scales. It was either the small little minibots or it was the Autobot cars. Uh, the only other exception is Optimus Prime, who was a bit bigger than these guys and he was a truck. But otherwise, it was all these uh, cars. And this here is Blue Streak. Um, he has had many re-releases since the original toy came out in 84. Um, the original, the exact original toy has been re-released with different paint jobs and all that stuff. They have changed him up. Um, he's had different looks, different colors. He's been blue, which with a name like Blue Streak, I guess that makes sense. Um, I have never owned a version of Blue Streak until this figure here. 
And this figure here is just from 2020. This is from the Earthrise line. And uh, yeah, it's a great blue streak. I was very happy to finally have this like 1984 original character in my collection as it has long been a glaring hole in my collection to not have this guy. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I waited, I guess, because despite all those versions since the original, I personally think this is the best version of Blue Streak that they've ever put in. And again, that's I'm kind of omitting masterpiece versions and things like that. But as far as just regular kind of standard release figures at uh, regular retail, yeah, I think this is the best Blue Streak that we've, uh, that we've ever got. And because he's the only one that I've ever gotten, he's obviously going to stay on my shelf. Now this here is Hound, so he transforms into like a military jeep. Uh, I did not own the 84 original, and I haven't owned any version since. Um, although I think this here, this is the 2008 Generations version. So when I started collecting again in like 2006 with that Bumblebee, and I was waiting for them to release like new versions of all the classic characters, this was the first Hound we get. And I think it's, so I think this might be version two of Hound ever. Like there might've been some repaints of the original 84 toy, but I think as far as new versions of him, I think this is the first one we got. And I think it's pretty good. Like he actually looks animated to me more so than other figures that were released on the time. It looks like they used the animation as the model for him, less so like the original toy. So uh, yeah, I think this figure is really cool. I like it a lot. And I still think he holds up even though, you know, he's 13 years old now or whatever. But yeah, he's still pretty poseable. And, uh, yeah, he holds up pretty good. However, with the modern line, um, the Siege, the Earthrise, the Kingdom stuff, they've all been really good. So it's hard for me to pass up an update of a character that I've had for so many years. So I did get the 2018 Siege version of Hound, which is what you see here quite a bit different he's a lot closer to the original toy as far as color and stuff go he doesn't look animated the way this guy does uh, and yeah this is a solid figure like i really like the way this guy looks a lot of nice detailing in there and yeah he's just a solid figure i think this is the best hound figure that they've ever put out and again i'm going to say that a lot about any of the 2020 2019 releases uh this guy was from 2018 so when siege first launched so yeah anything in that the current war for cybertron truly trilogy chances are that's the best version of these characters that we've ever gotten so even though again i think this is a solid figure i think if i had to make some room i could probably consider boxing this guy up because i do think this is an improved version and i think it just matches up better with my collection whereas this guy looks a little bit more animated now, next up, we have Ironhide. So this is the Autobot that transformed into a red minivan. And uh, this is a character who he was always, he always felt important to the mythology. Um, like even he's one of the characters that made it into the live action movies and stuff like that. Um, the problem is, is he probably had the worst vintage toy out of the whole line of Transformers. He did not have a head. Like when you looked at the character model in the cartoon, and then you looked at the toy, it was ridiculous. Um, like the figure stopped at the shoulders, essentially, of where the character, um, you know, continued on in the cartoon to have a head. And so I always hated that vintage figure. And uh, so when I started collecting Transformers again in the 2000s, I really wanted a nice new version of him. And uh, it took me quite a while to get one. This is actually from the 2015 uh, Combiner Wars line. So there was other versions of him kind of in the meantime, but I never really liked any of them. This is the first one that I liked enough that I can finally add to my collection and say, okay, I finally have Ironhide. For one, he's got the, uh, the silver face. I think the probably the previous version that I could have got before this one would have been from like 2000, I don't know, 10 or 12. But he had a, like a bright blue, like baby blue face, which I really didn't like. So that's why I passed on that one. But this here, it looked enough like Ironhide from the cartoons and then he had a silver face. He's got that distinctive kind of red, you know, crest down the middle of his head. So I really like that. The problem with these Combiner Wars figures is so many of them use the same body because they all have that gimmick where uh, like this, this nub here could be used to make him 
part of a combiner. You could stick that in another transformer and he would turn into an arm or you could stick it up and he would be a leg. Um, so for that gimmick to work, they had to kind of change the look of some of these characters. Now, as long as he's a red robot and his face matches up, I was content. So I thought this was a pretty good Ironhide. But I did definitely have to upgrade him when the Siege version came out in 2019. So you see here, this is much closer to what I wanted. It's much closer to the cartoons. He's got, again, the head is it's red with the crest, but even just the design of the face, it's, it's a lot closer than this one. And also one of the key elements is this big windshield in the chest. That was kind of one of the defining looks of Ironhide. And if it was the vintage toy, this is all. You, that's where the toy would end. You just have that torso with the windshield. Um, so yeah, it's it's reminiscent of the vintage figure, but obviously vastly improved because you got that head there. Um, and yeah, it's a solid figure, and it's it just looks like it's supposed to be Ironhide rather than them just taking an existing gimmick and sticking an Ironhide head on it. So this one's really great. Now I think they actually did improve it just a year later this is from 2019 the siege line but in 2020 they did an earthrise version of ironhide and he's just even closer to the cartoon and stuff and that's in part because the earthrise version actually transforms into a minivan like the original ironhide whereas this one here transforms into kind of a cybertronian space minivan so he's got some kind of weirder angles and stuff you know it doesn't look like a real vehicle um it doesn't bother me too much because I don't care about his vehicle mode, but you can tell just by looking at him that he doesn't really transform into a standard minivan. So uh, I like the new version better, but because it's only a year out since I bought this one, and he's not a character I... Like, he's important, and I like him, but he's not one of my favorite characters, so I don't really feel like spending the extra 30 bucks to upgrade him. I think this one's good enough. So yeah, this guy's definitely going to stay on my shelf, but uh, there's a very good chance that this guy could end up in the bin. Next up, we've got Jazz. So this is another important character. Um, he's one of the few guys that made it into the live action movies and all that stuff. He's been there since day one. He had kind of a fun personality in the uh, in the cartoons. And uh, yeah, so this figure here, like I don't own the vintage figure. This one here is from 2010. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty solid Jazz figure. He's got all the characteristics that I would expect a Jazz to have. With the doors off to the side, he's got that visor over his eyes, but then he's got the mouth and nose. Like, uh, it's, it's a good look. And uh, this is a character that I have not bothered to upgrade yet. Like, if they put one out uh, in the current line, like, say, in the Earthrise or Kingdom, I probably would. Um, but, yeah, I haven't as of yet. I still think this figure holds up. They have made some nice ones. Like in 2017, there was a version of him in the Power of the Primes. And this year, there's a new version of him as part of the Studio Series line, which is based on the uh, original animated Transformers movie. And that figure looks pretty nice. I haven't seen that yet, but if I see that in stores, I might pick that one up as a replacement to this figure here. But yeah, I still think this one holds up uh, quite nicely, despite being, you know, like 10 years old. The only other Jazz figure I have is this reaction figure version of him. So, uh, yeah. Considering reaction figures kind of break the character down to the most simplest version, the way they looked in the cartoon, when you take a look at this guy here, compared to the toy I got, I think you can see how, uh, how spot on he is as far as the design goes. So that's why I like this guy. So next we're going to take a look at Mirage. He transforms into like a Formula One style car. And uh, the original one... Um, his design wise when he turned into a robot I would say he was a lot like all the other um, Autobot cars even though Formula 1 is a pretty unique shape um, when you transformed the vintage Mirage figure into a robot he was still just a big brick of a figure just a big solid rectangle um, so when the 2006 classics version of Mirage came out here I really liked it. He was not a character I had a particular fondness for because I didn't own the vintage one when I was a kid. But I really like how they kind of changed up his look. Like he's 
much skinnier. Like he looks taller and lankier than any other Transformer in the line. And uh, it just kind of made sense given the type of vehicle, this really sleek and slender car that he transforms into, that why would he transform into a big chunky robot or whatever? I really liked this new sleek design for him. So yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite figures that came out of that kind of early 2000s era. Not just because it's a great figure, but it's also just an improvement on the character. They took some chances with him. Now, uh, so this is one of those characters that I haven't felt the need to replace, kind of like with Jazz. They've made newer versions of him, but uh, I just really like this look. I do have the reaction figure of Mirage. So this is what he would have looked like in the, uh, the old cartoons. And they did make a new version of him in Siege. And as I said earlier, pretty much any time they make a character in Siege, it would have been an improvement over anything else and would have replaced any of these like mid-2000s figures. But with Mirage, um, he went back to kind of his chunkier, older self. Like obviously still way better, much more articulated than the, uh, the vintage figure. But he lost this kind of unique lankiness. And uh, so I didn't bother to replace him. However... I did end up with him in one form because I've got this hologram version of Mirage. Now, one of Mirage's gimmicks, and one of the reasons why he has his name is because he was able to kind of like go invisible and change his appearance. You know, kind of, he could project mirages or illusions. So this is not a figure I would have sought out on its own, but he came in a three-pack with a couple other figures, and I really wanted the Impactor figure from that collection, so I ended up with this. So this is the same figure from uh, that was in the regular Siege line. So if I put him next to him, you can see how he's shorter and squattier and a little more just like a rectangular shape. He, lo he loses that uniqueness to him. But it is a nice sculpt. And unfortunately, as much as like translucent figures are kind of cool, um, I think this figure's strengths were in the paint job. And if you saw this version, like the Siege version, it looked really nice. And then they actually did a repaint of it in like his evil Decepticon disguise. And I thought that looked even nicer. Uh, I just don't think it looks that great in the translucent. Like it's, it's a neat gimmick. But um, yeah, even though this is a brand new figure from uh, just uh, 2019, 2020, uh, I could see him ending up in the bin perhaps. Just because where it's a very kind of scene specific like him invisible like i would never want an invisible mirage this is kind of like my main mirage on a shelf so i'll probably keep both of these guys on the shelf for now but if one of them had to go it would be this guy unfortunately because this guy is just still too cool next up is prowl this is the 2008 version from the transformers universe line which was basically still the classics slash generations line and uh it's decent and it is the only Prowl I have in my collection, and it's the only one I've ever had in my collection. But it's due for an upgrade. I don't think it's perfect. Um, like, he's got all the Prowl, like the key elements. He's got the doors off to the side. He's got the, you know, the red spiky things on his head. He's got the missile launchers on either side of his head there. Like, he looks good, but he's a little awkward. I find he's got some spots where he's a little hollow in places. Um, he doesn't stand up very well. He just, this figure just feels a little dated. The way it's built and the articulation of him. Um, and the thing is, they have made Prowls recently. He was in the, uh, the Siege line and he was in the Earthrise line. If I had to guess or say what the best Prowl figure was, it would probably be the 2020 Earthrise figure. But I didn't get that one when I saw it, nor did I get the Siege version the year before, um, because I just thought they were too small. In the same way that I want my my little guys, like Bumblebee, to be at about the 5 inches mark, when it came, comes to characters like this, who are supposed to be bigger than Bumblebee, I need them to come in at at least you know 6 inches or so, so they're taller than Bumblebee and Cliffjumper and all that stuff. But it seems like the most recent versions of him, they've shrunk them down. So he's almost bumblebee size, and I really don't like that. So at least with this figure, the one thing he really has going for him is his height. Um, but yeah, I really hope to get a nice new upgraded version of him soon. 
this is a character that I think would really benefit from getting a figure in either the red or the ultimates toy line because I wouldn't really care if he transformed or not but yeah I just really like one with some good proportions and that a uh, good height and that looked like he's supposed to from the uh, the cartoon next up we've got Ratchet the Autobot medic who transforms into an ambulance um, I don't have the vintage figure but he was an exact repaint of the vintage Ironhide figure so he had the exact same problems he didn't have a head and so that made the vintage toy pretty stupid and undesirable so I never had that neither did Doug I think once we got the Ironhide we realized yeah we don't need this one in any other colors but I always really liked the character of Ratchet he uh he was featured pretty prominently in the comic books so uh yeah I've always liked him and I wanted a new version of him but when I started collecting Transformers around 2005-2006, there was just uh, nothing coming out. And uh, I was waiting and waiting patiently. And I was getting all these other characters. But with him, I finally caved and got this version in 2012. Now, like the Cliff Jumper I showed you, this is based on the Prime animated series. So it's a little more stylized. And I think this is a, like a cool looking figure. Um, I felt the same way about Cliff Jumper. Like, it's kind of nice to have these new kind of sleeker um these proportions are just a little different like the way their heads are designed like it was a cool looking line the prime series of figures the problem is it just doesn't look like a uh, ratchet to me like this would be a cool character if he was somebody different but i want just a nice classic ratchet so even though i like this toy i've never felt like i really had a generation one ratchet in my collection until 2019. So just like the Ironhide I just showed you, that figure got repainted into Ratchet. And this figure finally gives me a nice classic Ratchet with that head design with this kind of black like fin over the top or whatever. Like I think this guy looks great. I'm really happy to get him. But even from when I first got him, he wasn't perfect. I feel he's kind of lacking in the paint deco. Like he seems very plain. A little too white I could use some more I don't know black or grays or red just something to break it up a little bit more like maybe if this was a different shade of white um, like the way this guy's got just enough gray here and there it just makes him a lot more interesting to look at this guy's a little bland but that's a minor complaint I still think he's pretty cool now just like with Ironhide they did make a new version of him this is based on the cybertronian minivan so you can see he's got the same kind of front design as ironhide did um but the, they did make a version of both those characters as the earth minivans as part of the earthrise series the following year and i think that's probably the best ratchet going but just as i said with ironhide because this figure is so new and it pretty much does the trick i don't think i'll be upgrading it's not really worth the extra 30 bucks or whatever to upgrade so this will probably remain the go-to ratchet in my collection and as much as i like this figure um this is the kind of one that would definitely end up going in the bin probably because it just it never really sat right with me as ratchet so uh yeah there he goes next up we've got sideswipe now uh sideswipe he was one of the original autobot sports cars um i did not have him as a kid um so i didn't have any versions of him um, when I was started collecting again in the mid-2000s, I was waiting for a nice new version of him. Unfortunately, I don't feel we ever got a version that quite, uh, either that looked good enough or they just didn't release one. I can't even remember. But anyway, I did not have a Sideswipe to add to my collection until 2012. That's when I got this figure. And he was part of the Fall of Cybertron line. So this is one of those lines when they first started going to the Cybertron modes. So you can tell us by looking at this guy, he's big and bulbous. He transformed into a weird Cybertronian race car. He doesn't transform into an Earth like sports car. So I was okay with that for some characters. I actually didn't mind the uh, Cybertronian modes for some of these guys. Um, so yeah, I got this guy just because I felt I needed a side swipe. He was a classic Generation 1 character. You know, six years had gone by since I started collecting again, and I still didn't have one, so I bought this guy because he was, I think, probably the first readily and accessible sideswipe. But I'll tell you what, I've hated this figure since day one. Like, he looks fat to me. Like, not only does he have this big, huge hood that sticks out there that looks like he's got some giant double D breasts or something, 
But even his face, I just feel like he's got like pudgy cheeks or something. I'm not sure what's going on with the sculpting of this head. But I've never liked this figure. It was just too weird. It never looked like Sideswipe. The proportions seemed off. I don't like his dainty little legs. Never liked this figure. So it was a huge relief to get um, in 2018 this Siege version here. Because this looks like Sideswipe. This looks like the vintage toy. But obviously new and improved with new articulation. And I think this figure is stellar. This is uh, what really got me excited about the uh, the War for Cybertron figures. Is because I was a little worried that they were kind of going back to the drawing board. I'd been building this collection since 2006 of trying to get all these vintage characters. And I was looking... I was happy because when they got into the, the Titans Return and Combiner Wars, we were getting some more obscure characters. And when War for Cybertron was being promoted, it was like, oh, they're going to go back and redo all the main characters again. I guess I'm going to stop getting weird obscure characters. But uh, this kind of set me off on the right foot because this guy and Hound were the first figures I got from Siege. They were part of Wave 1. And I thought this was such a great figure. I was like, okay, you know what? If this is what we're going to get, I don't mind kind of replacing some of the figures in my collection because this guy is is really nice. Now, I don't necessarily think all the other figures in the War for Cybertron line have quite lived up to these. There's a couple that have not impressed me, but for the most part, they are pretty solid. And looking at these two figures together, like they're not even in the same ballpark. This guy's awesome. This guy sucks. This guy is absolutely, even if I pulled just one figure from my Transformers collection, this would be it because I hate this figure. Now we'll take a look at Sideswipe's brother, Sunstreaker. Now this was a character that uh, my brother Doug had when we were kids. And he was one of Doug's favorites. So he was kind of one of my favorites too by default. And uh, you know, he just had a cool design. I like this weird, these weird fins on the side of his head. So yeah, I never had the vintage one. But he's a character that I wanted to upgrade. So this is the 2008 Universe version. So that was... Uh, Again, I think Transformers Classics, Generations, Universe, all those things kind of blur together. Um, this guy's really cool. And I was happy that I didn't have to wait very long to add a Sunstreaker to my collection. Like, I think the head looks great. I think proportion-wise, like, he's the right height. There's nothing that I really dislike about this figure. His uh, knees are kind of weird, whatever you'd call those. The way this is just kind of hanging there. It looks a little odd. I don't necessarily hate it, though. It just looks weird. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's a pretty solid figure. And, uh, yeah, this guy remains my go-to Sunstreaker. Um, they have not made a version that has, you know, been better than this one, so I haven't replaced him. However, there is a new Earthrise version of Sunstreaker, which I will be getting. I actually, I've had it on pre-order for months from uh, a local toy store, but it hasn't come in yet. I don't know what the holdup is. But, uh, yeah, so when that eventually comes in, I will be adding a new Sunstreaker to my collection. Now, will that Sunstreaker dethrone this figure as the best? Um, I'm not sure. Because, uh, like I said, this one is a little weird with the knees and everything. And even though I don't have the Sunstreaker yet, I actually have a repaint of the 2020 Sunstreaker. So this is exactly what Sunstreaker is going to look like when I eventually get him. Um, this guy is a different character, but he uses the whole Sunstreak mold, the same Sunstreaker head, except he's in red. So, yeah, when you put them side by side... Um, this guy's smaller, which I don't like because these transformer, these like Autobot cars, I prefer them to be at this scale, like the full six inches where this guy's a little bit shorter. And this guy suffers the same problem as, uh, like Ratchet and some of the other modern figures is they seem a little bland. Like I assume Sunstreaker is going to be the exact same except yellow instead of red. So he'll probably have the same like black highlights in certain spots. But this guy here just seems like a big block of red to me. And it makes him seem more like a toy and less like a possible like real vehicle. Um, like just some of this extra detailing, like the lights here and everything, this kind of just gives him something interesting to look at. And I don't think the new version is going to have any of that. It's just going to be this solid yellow figure. So I, I will get this one. Like I said, I already pre-ordered it. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be an upgrade to this one here. I kind of feel the same way about Sunstreaker the way I did about Prowl. Um, even though it's possibly the best version ever of the character, it's still not the perfect version of the character. So if they make a new version of Prowl and Sunstreaker in 2022 or something, I could see myself upgrading even from the current Earthrise series.
Now this here is Trailbreaker. Um, neither me or Doug owned the original uh, 84 Trailbreaker, so he's not a character I have a lot of attachment to. Um, he had, you know, there's I think at least one issue of the comic book that really focused on him. But uh, other than that, I didn't feel he was a character that was like super well developed. So yeah, never really felt I needed an awesome version of Trailbreaker as long as I had him in my collection. So this one here I got in 2013. Um, the line at that point, so it's still part of the classics line, but it was called the Thrilling 30 at that point. I think because it was the 30th anniversary of Transformers or whatever. And he was actually called Trail Cutter. I think they lost the rights to the name Trailbreaker for a while. And this guy's fine. Like, it, it's, uh, it's a good Transformer figure. Like, if, I, if this wasn't based on a particular, uh, you know, look for a, a character from the cartoon or anything, I think he, proportion-wise, uh, you know, as far as having big hollow parts or anything, I think he holds up pretty well as, like, as a solid Transformer figure. Uh, I don't mind the look of him at all. But he just never really looked like Trailbreaker. So that's why I was glad to get a new version uh, pretty late in 2020. So I got the new Earthrise Trailbreaker. And even though this guy, I would say he's probably one of my least favorite Autobots ever. I don't know, something about like that head design, it just doesn't grab me. I don't know, something about the flat top. Maybe the fact that his face and the head is all one solid black. It just, it the detail kind of gets lost. It seems kind of plain. Um, regardless, I love this figure. He might be of a rather uninteresting character, but it doesn't really get any better than this Earthrise figure. I think it, like, proportion-wise, design-wise, like, this looks how Trailbreaker should look. It's a nice callback to the vintage figure. Um, so, yeah, this guy is totally adequate as, you know, some random robot in the Transform universe, but he's definitely not a Trailbreaker. So, yeah, if I don't, if I have to make room on my shelf, this, unfortunately, is the kind of figure that's going to get boxed up because, uh, yeah, this guy is definitely far superior at representing that particular character. So now we got Wheeljack. This is the 2011 Generations Wheeljack. So I've had this guy for 10 years now. And he's a, you know, he's a decent figure. I like the, uh, the head design. They've got, you know, all the elements of Wheeljack that you need with the kind of weird ears on the side and the grill on the front. It's a cool look. Um, but this figure always felt a little awkward, like his legs seem too short and too wide set at the bottom. He's a little delicate, like to, I'm always worried he's kind of going to flop around or place, things are going to fall out of place. He's a, like, he's an okay figure, but I was always, I was always thinking that, yeah, I could use an upgrade of this guy at some point. Now, this is one of those characters where he got a uh, recent upgrade in 2020. Here's the Earthrise figure. Um, but he still feels a little short. Uh, he's a little stocky, and I feel he's a little plain. He's kind of lacking in the details a little bit. I think he could get some paint apps, and he would be better. I like the head design. You know, like, it's a, it's a good wheel jack, but, but, but could definitely be better. So, yeah, I think this is an upgrade from this guy, but uh, this is a character that I think I would like to see in the Red series or something, just so I could get a more definitive version of Wheeljack. Now, since I've run so long, I'm just going to lump these three guys together. So these guys, um, if you're a, you know an old school Transformers fan, you probably recognized every character I've talked about up till maybe now. You might be thinking, I don't remember these guys from 1984. And to be honest, neither do I. These guys were called Power Dashers. Um, they were very simple Transformer guys. Um, only like one or two moves, I think, to transform them. But they were only available through a mail-away. And I'll be honest, I don't ever recall seeing any sort of promotion for these guys being a mail-away. So I don't even know if it was available in Canada, where I'm at. Maybe if you're in the States, you might at least remember getting a coupon for these guys, um, even if you never actually owned them. But uh, yeah, I don't. I'd never even heard of any of these characters. They weren't featured in any of the comic books or the cartoons or anything like that when I was a kid. So this was totally new to me. But all three of these characters got figures in 2019 as part of the Siege line. And uh, yeah, all these characters are pretty cool. So I'm happy to upgrade them uh, or to, to add them to my collection. And this is the first time these characters have even had names. 
when you ordered away for a power dasher back in 84, apparently, they would send you one of three types. So either the drill type or the uh, F1 type or the jet type. Um, and that was really all they said about them. But now they all have names. So we got Zetar and Aragon and Chromar. And uh, they're all pretty cool. And uh, because these are the only versions of them that have ever existed since those original 1984 mailaways, which I obviously don't have, all three of these guys are definitely going to stay on my shelf. Uh, and I don't imagine they're going to get upgraded new versions of these guys anytime soon. So now let's talk about the man of the hour, everybody's favorite Autobot, Optimus Prime. Now, I don't have the vintage one. Um, I did at one point. Um, I don't any longer. Um, there have been plenty of re-releases of that original figure over the years. Um, it was a cool figure. It held up pretty well, even though, like, you know, he didn't move all that well. You know, I would have wished he was a little bit more articulated when I was a kid or anything. I still think that toy held up pretty pretty well, and he looked pretty cool. Now, what I do have here, this is something from just a couple of years ago. This is a non-transforming truck, but it's in that vintage-style box. And, uh, yeah, it looks just like the, uh, the truck mode of that original Optimus Prime. So... I don't really care about vehicles or anything like that, but this came out right around the same time that uh, the the reproduction figure was available for 70 bucks, and I considered buying it because I just thought that'd be kind of cool to have the vintage Optimus Prime, but I couldn't justify 70 bucks. And then I saw this guy for sale for like I think 10 bucks, and I was like, you know what, I'll get that. That way I get the you know the fun of the retro style packaging, I get the truck and everything like that. So that's that's cool, but yeah. I don't have the vintage Optimus. I do have a couple other Optimuses. These guys don't really count in my collection. I've got the uh, Mighty Mug Optimus Prime. This was kind of the the trendy, fun thing before Funko Pops were a thing. Um, I also have the reaction figure of Optimus, which I think is really fun. But these things here, I wouldn't consider replacements for my actual Transformers. And I do have this one little rinky-dinky Optimus Prime. This guy came out as part of the Reveal the Shield line. Uh, he's just like a two-inch tall figure. I think I got him for five bucks. Um, and yeah, how can you pass up an Optimus Prime for five bucks? But uh, yeah, this guy I do currently display on my Transformers bookshelf. And he takes up so little room, I could probably keep him there. But obviously this would never be like the default Optimus Prime in my collection. So who knows? He, uh, he could very easily end up boxed up. So when I was building my modern Transformers collection, obviously I needed a nice new Optimus Prime for my collection. And that was harder to do than you might think. Um, like nowadays, it seems like there's new Optimus Prime every three months or so. But back then, um, after I got that Bumblebee in 2006, I was waiting for a, uh, an Optimus Prime that was just as good and that would match up with him. Um, but it took me a long time to find one I was happy with. So these are some of the earlier ones I found. So this figure here is actually from 2006. It was from a two-pack. I actually didn't buy the two-pack. I got this secondhand. Um, but this is a weird Optimus Prime. Like, I like the way he, he looks pretty close to the, you know, the, how he looked in the cartoon. At least at the time, that's what I thought. It seemed like it was closer than anything else I'd been seeing around. Um... Yeah, he kind of feels like an action figure, not like a normal Transformer, though he does transform. Um, he's got this weird feature here where you press his button on his back and he spins around. I don't know why you'd want him to do that, but uh, anyway, it's like it's okay, but it was never really going to be my default Optimus Prime. Now this guy here, I actually think he has a really cool design. This is from 2010. This is from... The War for Cybertron, same as the uh, like side swipe I showed you earlier. So again, this is the first time that a lot of these characters were getting made in their Cybertronian modes before they ever would have traveled to Earth. And I think Optimus has a really cool, like big and bulky Cybertronian mode. I really dig this, but uh, the figure is just so friggin' small. Like it's kind of weird that he's so big and bulky, and yet he's like just about probably not even six inches, about five inches or so. And so I could never have that as my default Optimus. 
like I'm not, I don't get too hung up on scale, but there are certain characters I feel need to be taller based on how they were in the vintage toy line. So like if my starting place for my modern Transformers collection was this Bumblebee. So he's at about five inches or so. And that was a perfect scale for him. I didn't need, considering the old Bumblebee was way smaller, I didn't need my new Optimus to be way bigger so that he was to scale with Bumblebee. I just needed him to be a bit bigger. And so if you consider that, like, here, so here's Ironhide. So he's what I would consider to be a middle scale character. He's clearly taller than Bumblebee. So I want my Optimus Prime to be taller than that. You know, maybe a head, head and shoulders taller than Ironhide. And so this guy here, I just, he didn't feel like a credible leader of my Autobots on my shelf. He's just too small, even though he's a kind of a cool design. So I still needed a new version of him and I just wasn't finding what I wanted. But now they've put out a bunch of new versions of Optimus Prime. Here is the, uh, the Red series. So this is Hasbro's new non-transforming line. He's pretty close to what I want, but he's still a little too small. Um, like I like that he really looks like the cartoon. Um, he's got some neat features that can open up his chest, and he's got the Matrix leadership in there. Like I, the fact that he doesn't transform, I like how he's nice and simple. He doesn't have all kinds of extra kibble hanging off of him. He doesn't have any action features. There's no buttons to make his torso spin around or anything like that. Like it's just a nice, simple Optimus Prime. But I almost feel that this is a separate line. I don't know if I can really mix transforming and non-transforming just because they they don't really fit all that well together now an optimus prime that i did get as part of the power of the primes line in 2017 was this optimus prime now you'll see here he's just an empty shell right now so if i back that up you see he's missing his head and his chest now, I thought this was actually an awesome Optimus Prime figure. I was really pleased with him. Um, the one thing that I maybe didn't like was that it kind of looks like he has, you know, big feet. But then you see here, and he's got a problem that a lot of Transformers have, is he's actually just got little dainty ankles with these big, awkward feet. I think that looks a little weird. I don't, I don't love that. And the other problem I have is he was just, like, too big. Compared to Ironhide and Bumblebee, it wasn't too bad. Like if this, I would have been fine with him being my default Optimus, but he was just a little bit tall. Now the reason why he looks the way he does, and I probably should transform him into the full Optimus so you can see him, but I'm just too lazy to do that, and I've, this video is too long as is. But what's so great about that figure is that you can pop out the chest, and you get this whole other figure of Orion Pax, which is Optimus Prime before he became Optimus Prime, and. Uh, so like, yeah, you can probably see if you, there's the front of the truck and everything that kind of plugs into the chest of this guy and Optimus' head is hidden in there somewhere. Um, but regardless, I thought it was such a cool Optimus, but it pained me because I thought this was such a cool Orion Pax figure and you don't get Orion Pax figures every day that I wanted to display him like this. And he fit in exactly with how I wanted, like scale-wise. Like he's... I felt like the perfect height with these guys here. He's like just a head taller um, and it's a cool character. I don't have any other Orion Paxes. So I paid, you know, that figure was probably, I'm going to guess 40 to 50 bucks because it was such a big bulky figure. And yet I was taking all the bulk away from him just so I could have this Orion Pax figure, which, uh, which is great as no Orion Pax, but now I still needed an Optimus Prime in my collection. So fortunately it wasn't that long until I got this figure here. So this is from the Siege line from 2018, I wanna say. And so you can see here, this guy is pretty much perfect. He is a great looking Optimus, very generation one style. I love the head design. He's exactly the right height, as far as I'm concerned, to fit in scale with my uh, collection here. That works out perfectly for me scale wise. Um, as far as the design goes, his feet, he doesn't have the dainty little ankles. Um, I don't think he has a lot of kibble hanging off of him. Like he's got this thing on his back, but that could almost look like it's a jetpack or something. Uh, the stuff on his arms, it's a little much, but it's not too bad. 
But overall, I think this is a great Optimus. Now, I think they may have possibly improved on it with the uh, the Earthrise figure that has come out since. Uh, I don't know if I would bother to upgrade it because I did just get, you know, the Power of the Primes version in 2017. And then I got this version here um, just in 2018. So do I really need the 2020 version? Uh, I don't know. That remains to be seen. But regardless, I think if I had to keep a Transformer, like one Optimus in my collection, it would definitely be this one. And I feel justified that I can keep Orion Pax in there as well as a separate character. Currently in my Transformer shelf, I just have this thing displayed, just sitting in the back of my shelf like this. But this thing here will probably definitely have to go uh, in, in storage. There's not much point in having that empty shell on my shelf. And as cool as like this version is, yeah, it just doesn't really fit in when I've got this far superior version. So he's probably going to go in the bin. This weird little spinny version will probably go in the bin. Um, the Red Series, definitely not going to bin him up. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue to collect the Red Series or not. Um, but I think they're kind of their own separate thing. So he'll either, I'll find room for him on the shelf as well. Or these figures might be displayed in a total separate area of my man cave. But uh, overall, so there you go. Those are my Optimus Primes. So what do you think? I, again, I'm sorry this video went so long, but uh, do you agree, disagree? Do you think I should have another version of any of these characters? Um, yeah, please comment on all that stuff below. Okay, so that was my 1984 Autobot collection. So uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to you know hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and you know, uh, please comment below. I always appreciate all your comments. So yeah, that's it. Episode 110, two years in. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon with another video. So thanks for watching. Ciao.